everyone! Today's video is going to be a model horse tack making DIY. So I'm going to be showing you how I make these little saddle pads for my model horses. This is a blue and stars one I made and this one here, this is one of my absolute favorites because, I don't know, I just really like the colors and then I have like a brown piping around it. But really it's just a whip stitch and I will be showing you all that. And this one here I just started making today but I was doing that whip stitch and I did not give myself enough thread so I've run out of thread and now I did too many stitches and I don't even have enough thread to make the knot so that's just great. We won't be doing that <laughs> in this next one. For materials you'll need thread, fabric. I have two different fabrics. I have a patterned fabric for the top of the saddle pad and then of course I also have a white fabric for the bottom and you'll need scissors and I have small scissors for like cutting the thread and for little things and pins and you'll also need a needle and thread which mine is right here, <laughs> my needle. And I also have a pattern for cutting out my fabric before I sew it. So to make your pattern, you just cut out the shape of the saddle pad you want, but just make it much bigger than it actually is going to be. The first step is to make sure you have your fabric facing good sides together, and you're going to place your pattern on your fabric and you're going to pin it. Now you're going to cut out the fabric following your pattern and as you can see I've already started and I'm now going to switch to my little scissors so I can do this tight bit right here. Now I can remove the pins and the pattern and then I'm going to put one pin back into the middle so it all stays together very evenly. Now I just have to quickly fix my mistake over here so I can get my needle back. Now we're going to thread the needle and of course make a knot on the end. Now I'm just going to start hand sewing the hoi around the pad. Of course, I'm going to leave a large opening on this end right here so that I can turn it inside out when I'm done sewing. And you can do this very quickly on a sewing machine. I am hand stitching this one because I think it's a little easier to be really precise with each stitch when I'm hand sewing, but it does take longer. And also when you're sewing, even with a sewing machine, you have to be very careful because you want your stitches to be very, I don't know how really to explain it, precise because when you turn it inside out, any single off stitch will make it stick up funny, if that makes any sense. So I try to sew it very tidy. So I've made it halfway around with the sewing and I'm at the part here that sitting on the horse this would be like the little cutout for the withers. So at this part I'm now going to stitch a few stitches straight across like two or three. I'm not just going to go straight up like the V here. So I'm kind of going to change it just a little bit. I'm not going to follow the fabric exactly. So like I said, I'm going to do a few straight stitches and then go up following the fabric. The reason I want to do that is because if I don't, I kind of get like a lot of bunching right here. So I found if I do a few straight stitches, it should help. So I finished going all the way around and I thought I'd just show you really quick where I made a tiny little mistake just so... Yeah, I can show you, but right after I finished making the last clip, I went to continue sewing around, and right here, this stitch is kind of like too far out, so we'll see what that does when we turn this right side out. We'll see if that makes this look funky or not, but it's kind of, that will probably affect the shape of the saddle pad a little bit. Anyway, I finished off, so I made a knot down here, and I should have showed you how I did that. I'll just try to kind of explain it. So I grabbed a little bit of the fabric with my needle right beside my last stitch, just like I have here, and I try to grab both layers of fabric. And then you take your thread and you wrap it around the end of the needle three times, and then you just pull your needle through and then you kind of just pull that knot you're gonna have down close to the fabric. And it makes a good knot, and then we can just cut I keep wanting to call this yarn. This is hardly yarn. And I keep wanting to call it string. It's thread. <laughs> now we're going to turn this right side out. This is the saddle pad with right sides out. And you can probably see how it can look a little uneven, a little lumpy around the edges. 
but it's going to look good. We can fix all that. So we have this raw edge here that we had to leave open. And I'm going to fold these edges down. And hard to do with one hand, but I'm going to fold them down and tuck them in. And then we're going to re-thread our needle. And if, well, if I can find it, to make this knot on the end of our thread with our needle, I just take the thread around my finger three times and then I roll this loop and then I'll take my other hand and hold this and I'll pull it and we'll make a knot. And there is the knot. Now I'm just doing the whip stitch the whole way around the pad even though I don't actually like need it the whole way around it because we already sewed the pad together. But I kind of just like the look. So it looks really good on these darker pads because you can really see it. But I'm finding on these lighter ones it doesn't really show up that well so it kind of just looks like a little bit of a weird texture around it. But that's okay. I'm doing it anyway because when I'm going around I can take these little mm, like puckery bits and I can push them down and then sew over top of them. And I think once I have it the whole way around it'll look good but definitely looks best on these darker fabrics. And just a quick note, when I started the whip stitch, I took that big knot and I pushed it down inside of the pad. So how do I explain it? So it's like, remember we had the opening, so I put it down inside and then sewed over top of it so you can't see it. Now I finished stitching all the way around and I made the same knot that I was telling you about earlier. But as you can see, it's on the outside and we don't really want that. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to press it right down directly through the knot I just made and then take the needle down through the inside of the saddle pad between the two layers of fabric and then once I'm about here or so it doesn't there's real no like actual spot but just down a little bit and then bring your needle up through either side and then you cut the thread and you kind of just let it go back inside so that's what you do with this tail. My saddle pad is now done. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't think this is, this isn't like the very best pad I've ever made. It turned out really big. I think it's because this pattern I have, this is for making saddle pads using the sewing machine. And the sewing machine leaves a whole quarter inch around the pad when you stitch. And when I was hand stitching, I kind of kept my stitches pretty close to the edge. So these pads here that I made earlier on, like these were a while ago, maybe I'm kind of just a little out of practice, but they turned out smaller and they fit really well with these little saddles and the homemade saddles. They fit really well with those. So I put this pad with this draft horse and tipping my ponies over and the saddle doesn't quite fit, but it does just barely. But I think it's really cute on him. The color is good on him. Anyway though, it's still I'm still gonna use it for so many different things. But yes, the whole size thing, I guess, keep an eye on that if you're going to be hand stitching and how close to the edge you're gonna stitch because that will really determine what size of pad you get. I also, when I was looking for saddles to pair it with, I thought maybe I could pair it with a Western saddle, which would be cute, but this one has the breastplate so that wouldn't fit him. I was going to show you another pad I had made if I can just find it, here it is. Here's what I did. I did not do the whip stitch around this one because my thread was white and I knew I wouldn't be able to see it just like this. <laughs> I should either use a different color thread or different color fabric. That way it would show up nicely like it did for this pad and this one. I just switched this off of Charlie and put it on Flora. I think the saddle matches her better and the riders fit on her better. So I think this will be her saddle pad. And thank you guys for joining me for this little craft time. Even though I'm just a little out of practice, this one turned out just a little lumpy in some places. They can turn out really tidy looking, like super tidy, just with a little practice. So I'm a little out of practice, but that's how you do it. And anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye!